So welcome to our December meeting. Um, as you all know, this is my last meeting, and with that purpose, today Gerard, our incoming chair, will be running the meeting so that if he has any questions, he can ask in this kind of practice round that we have today. So, Gerard, take it away. Wonderful. Hi, everyone. Um, hi, everyone. <laughs> um, uh, so, I will start things off um, by a quick review of the minutes. Um, so did we all get a chance to look over our last meeting, the November meeting's minutes? Yes. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I motion to approve the minutes. Okay. And a second? Second that. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, minutes for the November commission meeting are approved. Um, and I will now throw it over to Holly for an update on the financials. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Okay. So uh, this is where we stand right now. So we've still got just over 11000 left over in our 2022 BAC grant allotments, um, and that is in addition to that 832 which is the 2% addition that we get on an annual basis. Um, we still have $40,000 in this year's BUEA zone grant funds that have been untouched. I don't anticipate we're gonna spend any of those in the next uh, two weeks. And then we have the remaining funds that were left over from 2021 BUEA zone art funds. So <coughs> let me talk a little bit about how these money, these numbers are gonna go down in the, couple, the next couple of weeks. So basically, we finally, finally have MOUs that have been approved by legal for the BUEA and BAC operations grants. So those are going out into the world. Thank you, Bryony, for signing off on all of those. And I anticipate tomorrow we will get the MOUs for the Emerging Artist Art Projects grants out into the world. Once we do that and the everybody signs off on them and we push them through claims, we will actually start paying out that money. And then you will see the BAC grant allotment go down to zero. Um, and you will also see the BUEA zone grants left over from 2021 get reduced by roughly like $12,000, basically. Um, just kind of acknowledging that these numbers don't accurately reflect where we're going to end up at the end of this year. If you all are all right with it, what I'd like to do in January is just show you ultimately where we ended up at the end of fiscal year 22, and then I'll also present obviously on where we are with funds starting with fiscal year 23. As a note, um, we will not, um, the BAC grant funds, once they're gone, they're gone. But again, we're gonna spend those all down. For BUEA, in 23, we will again have $40,000 to spend. Right now, we are authorized to spend that on arts projects grants again and operations grants again. So we'll have 40K to work with from BUEA and roughly 50,000K to work with from BAC. Council gave us a 10K bump. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we pushed that through. It was very awesome. Any questions I can answer about the budget as it exists now or looking forward to 23? And I also just want to say, I think this year was a year of learning for me and learning how <laughs> the city process works and like what it takes to get an MOU at the door and what it takes then to get claims processing it. So I'm hoping that in 23, also because we're only gonna have three grant cycles as opposed to four, that we can really expedite these processes. We know what we need now. We know roughly the timeline for each of the cycles just so this money is dropping into artists' laps much earlier in 2023 and going forward after that. So that's mine. Excellent. So if we don't have any other questions on that, um, then we can move to item number three on the agenda. Um, so I uh, actually, before I... Uh, turn it over to Nick with a bylaw task force status. I want to give a quick note to some of the language that you might be seeing in the agenda. Um, and I think it's a, um, a slight tweak in language and then I th will also be a, um, uh, a slight difference in the way that we address certain items on the agenda. An update is going to be um, 
you know, primarily a like a a report or a statement from um, a particular uh, committee chair or task force leader, um, uh, and then that will be followed up by like specific Q and A from commissioners. Um, an open discussion is sort of like a conversation that um, we will all have on a particular topic, and that's meant to be back and forth and just more conversational. And then commissioner feedback, when you see that on an agenda, that's sort of um, intentional statements made about a particular thing, that's, and that's different than an open discussion in which there's conversation. Commissioner feedback is just asking for specific statements or opinions that particular commissioners have. Um, and so I just wanted to clarify that slight change to the agenda. Um, so Nick, to you with an update on the bylaw task force status. All right, thank you. Um, yeah, so we had our last meeting uh, on Friday, and the good news is it feels like we're pretty well ahead of schedule. Um, you know, basically we're at a point where uh, we have roles defined, um, job descriptions laid out, uh, sort of a common structure for how we've identified aspects of, of different job descriptions. Um, we've also addressed uh, sort of the role of, um, like, like Holly's role and city staff as it relates to the commission, um, have defined uh, terms and just general like terms and process um, for how these positions are assigned, how they're reviewed, um, that sort of thing. Um, and then, you know, we, we have also built in um, some language to set structure for uh, the, the, the two permanent subcommittee meetings, mm -hmm. um, public art and grants, um, and then also linking to basically just other, other information from uh, like our strategic plan uh, and sort of our core objectives so that that sits alongside all these roles as they inherently all tie together. Um, so that's basically where we're at in, in this working draft. Um, alongside that, um, we have a, uh, a summary findings document that's going to give a little bit of context for things that we've discussed in meetings that may not be actually spelled out in the bylaws, including some things that maybe we talked about and decided to not include intentionally, um, just so that future commissions have that as context and don't reinvent the wheel. But the gist is, um, uh, basically by this Friday, um, everyone on the task force is going to provide any final feedback um, on our working documents. Um, at the same time, um, I'm going to review our summary document and cross-reference it against our looser meeting notes just to make sure that everything else is added in there. So. Final call to those in this room um, who, who joined those meetings, mm -hmm. um, and Elliot as well. Um, just a reminder, feedback by noon Friday. Once we have that, um, I will uh, share the documents that we have with Holly, Chaz, and Polly mm -hmm. um, to kind of get their uh, initial review on it. And then the idea is that then this will be able to go in front of uh, the full commission um, shortly thereafter. So I think. You know, basically, like Holly, if if you all have any sort of deeper feedback, or you mm -hmm. want to join our January meeting, okay, um, that's probably the place that we could get into it, okay. and then that would put us in a spot so that we can then put all the text in front of the entire commission, um, give people a couple of weeks with it ahead of our February meeting, okay. at which point we'd like to have whatever discussion, questions, all that, and hopefully vote at the end. Um, we got close enough to it. Any any questions about the uh, task force by, or bylaws task force status update? Okay, great. I just put um, oh. the task force meeting on my calendar for January, so I will be there. Amazing. Perfect. Um, thanks, Nick. Um, okay, perfect timing, Babette. <laughs> <laughs> why don't Why don't we give Babette a, uh, a chance to collect herself and arrive? And uh, sorry, I'm... that's okay. No, all good. I would say jump to the next one. Okay, yeah, back. we'll flip we'll flip items four and five on the agenda. Um, so looking for commissioner feedback. So um, 
We're going to let Holly talk real quick about the Parks Department proposed design for the Bloomington Gateways. Um, and then after, after Holly gives um, uh, her, her update, um, I think she might have some specific questions for us, and then we'll give um, our feedback on it. Great. Thank you. Okay. So a couple of weeks ago, I learned that in 2018, the city and the Parks Department started working to create some kind of creative design to put at the gateway of Bloomington. So it's basically at the intersection of Route 46 and Old Route 37 that just is kind of like the welcome to Bloomington icon that folks see when they're coming into Bloomington or driving on through. Uh, so again, those conversations started in 2018. My understanding from some emails that Brian forwarded me is that the landscape architect for architecture firm that actually was given the bid to propose designs came and did a presentation to mm -hmm. the BAC back in 2019 when many of us were not here. Um, and then COVID hit and the plans went latent. At the beginning of 2022, Parks started the conversation again with the landscape architects and they have developed the proposals, the proposed designs, which I've placed on the table. Um, I've been asked not to share these on the screen publicly until after the meeting tomorrow. Um, so um, I learned about these designs about two weeks ago. Um, so this is the first I have seen them. So I'm kind of looking for, so these are going to be released to the public tomorrow as part of the Parks Commission meeting. So uh, the landscape architecture will be there at 6 to give another presentation. And then anyone who's there in person or joining the meeting virtually can give feedback. After that meeting, the designs will go live online. So any member of the public can see it and provide feedback. But again, I think this is a piece of design. It is a creative expression of Bloomington. It is a very important point of entering and leaving the community, I feel strongly that the BAC needs to give feedback on this. So what I'm interested in here are two things. Number one, what is your general idea of, what are your general thoughts of what they are proposing? And then number two, do you hate it so much that we need to push back beyond just saying, hey, if you're doing X, Y, or Z, why don't you think about also incorporating D, E, and F? So those are the two things I'm really looking for here. Also, you are all welcome to come to the meeting tomorrow, and you are also welcome to give feedback online. Once the designs do go public online, I will send you all the link to this. I would encourage you, Chas has already done this with our list of artists and art supporters in the community. I want as much artist feedback on this as possible. Um, just knowing that we're kind of at a late phase in the project, I just want parks to understand that going forward when they do projects like this, we need to be involved at an earlier phase and it is imperative that arts artists' voices be reflected in whatever piece of design is put in a very public space. So Holly, I don't even know if you would know the answer to it. These two sites were predetermined? Correct. Okay. Yes. And the... The bridge. Is yeah, yeah, the overpass. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is new. A new construction. There is nothing there now. That's my understanding. Yes. And you'll see in the packet, they're actually the design for the bridge, the way it kind of like is an arc that's covered, but you know, and it's set up to walk as a pedestrian crossway. Correct. And there's no concern about that being dangerous and people jumping off and all the rest of that. It's covered. There is a, it's covered. covered. There's a barrier. It, and it, it does have barriers. Okay. There, there is an existing bridge. Okay. There is. Yeah. There, there is an existing there bridge. Is. Yeah. Can, and, okay. and based on these renderings, it looks like it looks like the the existing bridge is going to be largely unchanged and that, that what is being added is like the um, it's like the light up Bloomington letters yeah. along the one side and then the landscaping at the two like Sorry. stair entry points. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you... Um, okay. I, j just because I take this route all the time, but basically uh, if you take like Rogers North 
um, and then turn onto the bypass. Or, or if you come in from 6937 and take the 46 entry into Bloomington, um, you will go underneath it. So it's 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 right up there, um, and it is, I believe, already like covered with that sort of cage. Okay. That shows it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then this is just adding to that, adding verbiage, yeah. and adding some landscape. Kapotchkis. Yeah. Okay. Um, feedback. I really like the combination of materials, the natural materials and the um, kind of aged uh, metal, whatever that is. Um, I think that's terrific. Um, and it looks like it's all uh, indigenous plants, or what do we call them? Native, Native plants, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, which I also appreciate. Um, uh, the, the bridge did make me think of the pedestrian overpass in Fort Lee on the way onto the George Washington Bridge, <laughs> but, but it's nicer than that. <laughs> um, it's nicer than that. The, the illuminated thing looks a little gaudy to me. Depends how bright it's going to be yeah. and what like what tone or what warmth the light will be. Mm -hmm. um, I'd be curious about that because if it's like an LED blue, that'd be that'd be gross. But um, <laughs> You could put that down in the minutes. I said it'd be gross. Quoted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but on the whole, I, I like it a lot. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's basic and not particularly not exciting. But if the I just didn't not being aware of the site, I, I felt uncomfortable commenting on it. But if the bridge is there. I think it's kind of an expeditious way of doing it, and it's no brainer. Agreed. On the bridge, like I, I don't, I wouldn't say the design is necessarily like super dynamic. Um, but I also don't quite know what the, um, I like they they reference like the the bridge that's at in Wolf Lake in Hammond, Indiana, and my folks live up there. And I do like that. Like that one's nice. I like I like the uh, it being lit up at night and being able to kind of see that. Um, and so that the. My thoughts on the bridge are, are, I have less thoughts on the bridge, I think, than I have on the, um, the other gateway. But I do, I do enjoy, like Suzanne said, I echo that of the natural, the juxtaposition of the limestone elements and the like, um, whatever the like, is it like perforated steel that they're potentially thinking about using? And I like the benches. I, I kind of, I like the idea of the limestone, like a limestone bench. That's pretty. Um, as long as there's no like hostile architecture incorporated into that. I'm very okay with it. Um, I like a, like a slab. I'll take a slab. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to quote myself with that. I'll take a slab. And does, uh, I just want to make sure that anyone on Zoom has a chance to comment if they have any comments. Does anyone on Zoom have any comments? I love, the, I heard native plants, love native plants. Um, I can't see what you guys are talking about, but um, I trust <laughs> There's a there's a link to it in Holly's email. Yeah, there's a um there's there's an attached packet or it might be it, it, there's an attachment or a link in the email I sent out with the agenda. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, and yes, I, yes. yeah, and so if you just want, I just if you have any specific feedback before January sixth, just shoot me an email and I'll make sure that it's captured. Perfect. Thank Thanks. you. All right, I'm gonna go against the brain here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it is boring. It is replaceable. It can have the word of the name of any city in pretty much the entire world, and it will be fine. But there's nothing in either of these designs that say Bloomington is this creative space within Indiana that is a little bit different, a little bit quirky. It has a personality. It has an energy that is not coming through in either of these designs. They're nicely done. They're like, they're not bad inherently, but they do not speak to me in any way. They do not move me. They do not interest me. Um, yeah, like overall. When you think of yourself as a Bloomingtonian, then you don't that see tower it does then. not. No, and yes, having benches, nobody's gonna sit there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. That that area of town, nobody's mm -hmm. gonna actually like sit down and enjoy a sandwich in the summertime. <laughs> 
yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. With cars running by do. everywhere. I was like, no one's gonna sit there. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you want it to be a little bit more intentional and create a space that could become a performance space yep. and activate it, that would be a lot more interesting. You could pull that off from time to time in the yeah. summertime and create, because there is enough space in that area for it. So how but, it? Yeah. but you're not gonna activate it, as I say, for a sit down yeah. there and it, you know, watch the birds with my kid. It's not gonna happen. So how could we activate it and make it more accessible for like more types of gathering, like a performance or something like yeah, that? Yeah, for the half, yeah. <clears throat> Like you could create a special event, but like you're not gonna use it the whole time. You could create something special based on the location and if it, if it is, has a bit more intention. It's a hard thing to do. Yeah because it is surrounded by cars, but if you put enough yeah, thought into it. It's, yeah, it's like hard to, but I mean, how it's also like kind of inaccessible, like people don't really like be crossing the street to like hang out in that middle area, but there is that like area with like benches, I think, over there, but you never really see people out there because it's like kind of a weird area to congregate of town, Yeah, you know? You're not gonna bring kids there either because it just runs yeah. yeah, yeah, so that's a great point. I, yeah. I, I feel like it's phoned in. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree, but I'm not. Are a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, I I agree that it's not that creative in terms of the um, the metal part or whatever, but but it does sort of speak to the industrial history of this town mm -hmm. as well as you know, um, and I think that's important for many of our our constituents. Um, and I don't. Th when I drive to the airport and I pass like the new Martinsville. Thing yeah. and then I pass the Mooresville or wherever the flag was made or whatever that sign is. They're they're really tacky and they're really like ostentatious and like unnecessarily ornate in a way that doesn't seem. Maybe it does reflect their towns, but my impression is it doesn't reflect their towns. Um, and and so I'm uh, while I do agree with Bryony that it's not as creative as it could be. I'm glad it's not like over the top. That's yeah. either going to go out of style in ten years or. Yeah or is a little embarrassing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I almost would prefer that over this, though, because it's like this, <laughs> yeah. the, like, like the only research they did for this is they're like, let's find like an IU, a, a, like a vintage IU sweatshirt and then use the font from that. And then that's the font we use, you know what I mean? And then it's just like light up tower, but it's like, that's kind of like a waste of electricity. Like I hope they at least put in some like, I don't know, like solar or something mm -hmm. to keep that That's lit because it's like yeah. kind of like doesn't really reflect point. our town to be yeah, like yeah. just having this gaudy like loud like bright light thing. You know what I mean? Like that's wasting. You know what I mean? I um, that that should be addressed for sure. Uh, I like the plants though. Yeah. <laughs> we all like plants. <laughs> and you do have that same yeah. shape down a few blocks down at the hospital. You do the the pole. Yeah, it, it's it's the same as the sculpture in front of the Eskenazi Museum. It's yeah. a lit pole. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a I have a question. Yeah, the, Are these going to be considered pop, like works of public art, like public art pieces? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is to yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm interested to hear. Yeah. I'll, I want to hear what you have to say. Because because I've heard people, 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 people talking. I, that's my. I don't consider this public art. Okay. I consider this integrated design and artful yeah. landscape architecture, mm -hmm. which which has its place, which is mm -hmm. which is worthy, but this is a, it's a sign integrated in landscape architecture. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, and so I think part of it is what do they intend it to be? Yeah. Um, you know, because I, I think that like, I, I agree with Nia's points, you know, about uh, like sustainability, I think at a minimum, it, there should be like a local solar power source for that. Mm -hmm. um, the the text is very generic. E even the most basic thing of like, all right, on the bridge, can you at least, even though it's not necessarily my favorite symbol, can you at least like add the city's logo, mm -hmm. like like the s snowflake the quilt. The quilt quilt thing, yeah. right? Like, can you at least add that, right? So it's not just straight text, right? You know, but but I think the other thing is like just look at the tower. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, court and steel. I guess first thing is, is I'm sure the architects were well aware of this. Were well aware of this, but um, I want to make sure that that 
Parks is fully aware of like how much that rust will bleed down onto the concrete below. Mm -hmm. um, Court and Steel, that sort of like weathered appearance has been very in vogue for the last like mm -hmm. five years or so. Mm -hmm. um, there is a chance actually that it will look quite dated in some time. Yep. Totally subjective. Yep. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess like the, the question is like, is it just a sign? Or do they want it to be public art? If they want it to be public art, you know, then for the tower at least, I would challenge them to think about <clears throat> the perforated design mm -hmm. yeah. and what they can do with that to make it interesting, to have some local time, even if it's subtle. What, mm -hmm. what story can they tell with that? And I sort of think back to the project that we worked with um, uh, with the IU student group. Mm -hmm. um, Lucas uh, Brown. Yeah, yeah, Lucas Brown's group where, you know, those cutouts told like a story with, you know, carbon emission, carbon emission history in the state, mm -hmm. right? Like if there's a story to tell um, or if the pattern, you know, reflects like the native plants plant planted around it or something like that, like if there's something to make it more artful and intentional, mm -hmm. that's what can transform it from just being like a sign. Yeah, I, I agree. I, as somebody who's designing signs, and you know, a, a sign is a sign, but you can be yeah. creative. There yeah. is, and you have to take into consideration what it's representing, mm -hmm. especially for those who are new coming into the city. It's like yeah. another Indiana town. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's like I mean it. it Good, like, good question, Gerard. Good point, Nick. And I think the the thing that I'm like maybe more mulling over is the like there there's potential for it to be public art, like yeah. you were saying, Brian. You too. Like there's potential for it to have those elements. And I think just echoing Holly's point earlier of the like it's something imperative to like distinguish at the like early on is like do we want it to have some sort of artistic like meaning beyond it just being a sign and if so like at what point do you bring those folks in to have those discussions and at this point it doesn't feel like there's much room to add some of that stuff though the like the activation space i think is something that we could challenge them to think about and the perforated steel for sure the bridge feels a little less um i don't know malleable to me at this point you know oh, sorry I, mm -hmm. I didn't actually get an answer on the question oh. If, if, if that's okay. Yeah. It, yeah. It, are these being considered? Oh, they, they, <laughs> basically the way it was pitched to me is we feel like these could be public art. And therefore, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we want your input. So that's, oh. yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and, and I do think like going forward, like my, again, my hope is that eventually we get to the point where, you know, and I think there was an intention to do that back in 2018, 2019, to have us, you know, involved earlier on. But I think if we can just get it in Park's mind, hey, BAC is always here to give feedback, you know, and to other entities as well, like other departments here, I think, you know, when they bring us these proposals, we can as a group or as a public art subcommittee say, do we see this as a piece of public art that we feel our feedback and our arts community's feedback is imperative to be included here? Or are we just like, hey, Parks, this is great. We're happy for you. Go forth. You have our blessing. And we will just invite you know, our community to participate in the public feedback process. I, I, the, the thing that bo really bothers me about the train trestle thing is it is not welcoming. Mm -hmm. it, it is really off-putting, if anything. And it looks like a, a, a cheap town. I, I, I get, I get, you know, would that have given the pedestrian bridge? The pedestrian yeah. bridge. Yeah. And I think it's really, the more I, the more I think about it, I think it's really kind of offensive, uh, in the sense that it just looks like. I think somebody said it looks like you know the quickest, cheapest answer you could do it and certainly somebody could could think of something that would be i mean the, putting the low the logo's not so wonderfully e either but at least it's something mm -hmm. uh and you know i i remember working i worked on one for my old town where you know it was a matter of you know but it went it, it was when the town was established uh in it or you know just just some some information about about the town and that um, the town, the town was kind of a more classic revolutionary town, 
and therefore that was conveyed in the welcome to your town sign. So I think there's nothing that's conveyed in here. It looks like the Santa Fe Railroad yeah, crossing. That, it's that, really that bad, if the more I think about it. That, that kind of like the, the other thought that I had is that these are ostensibly bicentennial gateways mm -hmm. that are being paid for out of the bicentennial bond. There's nothing when you look at this that oh. indicates that, right? Because mm -hmm. that's the other thing is that that like if you know again it was it okay the city you know wanted to use the bicentennial as an opportunity to beautify some things you know to to, to put put the, the, the town's name you know in in a couple of, like entry points okay that's fine but like there is no you know Bloomington is a relatively old. So then town it's like in the state. The least, but established in the day. Yeah, yeah. That would be the least you could do. Let's do maybe one to two more comments and then um, and then move on. Mm -hmm. Or no more comments. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I think uh, I think Holly said we can if you if you we want to chew on this a little bit more, um, th think about some more feedback. You can email that to Holly yeah. before January sixth. January, okay. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the time in the next two weeks if you wake up at three a.m. and start <laughs> really <laughs> angry. Or submit. To Just the yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And I, again, I will send that link out to you once it's live. And then again, if you feel like there's anybody else who you especially would you think would provide valuable input, feel free to blast it to them as well. I think the more feedback we can have, the better. And I think Parks would appreciate that too. Great. I, do, are they actually going to change the design at all after, after this point? There, or is there, it just there is space to change the design. These are still renderings. I think this is great feedback. I think, you know, some of it, I, okay. I yeah. Um, I, it's nothing. Nothing is set in stone or steel at this point. I, I, I think where I, I think where we would have struggled more if we were just like this is disgusting. We need to roll this all the way back. You know, you need to start over. I, I think we'd have less wiggle room there. But I think with the kind of suggestions we're giving and indications of hey, this isn't safe for kids. How can like would people really eat here? Think about the spacing of the perforation. Think about the lettering. Think about the lights. I think those are things that yeah, they the can location. still incorporate. Like, it seems like you know they're not local, so they're like just not really thinking about this location. What yeah. would it actually? You know what I mean? Like yeah. they're thinking like, oh, this is like in the middle of town, right? Like because it's right there. Like and it's like you know Bloomington kind of sprawls out, but it's yeah. like no, it's like way on the north side. Yeah, it's <laughs> no busy, one really. It's loud. You know what I mean? Like yeah. this will serve a very specific population, which is good. You know what I mean? But it's like also like I don't know. Yeah, they could put more effort into it. But I I left some comments in the yeah, chat. Yeah, I and recorded I'll those. Thank you. Email you yeah. too. So okay. yeah. Thank you. Great. So I think the point that nobody go nobody really sits around on that uh, other thing. They might not recognize that when they just came in to take a look. Mm -hmm. But if you live here, you know. I think Nia's the one who mentioned that. Yeah. Like I know some people that walk there at lunch once a, once in a while, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, thanks all for the feedback. There was a comment from, from Holly. Um, so we are going to go back to uh, agenda item number four, which is an open discussion. Um, I'd say we could we can probably do. I think we got time for maybe like ten to fifteen minutes on this, um, if we if we want to go that long, um, on uh, emerging artist art collection um, purchasing. So I will uh, hand this over to Babette and Bryony. Okay. Um, I would like to say a few things leading up to this that I think are important and maybe a little bit lengthy, but if you'll bear with me, they have a, a reason. Uh, basically, when I moved to Bloomington, I came here from northern Westchester in New York, and it, I had a very big learning curve there trying to start an arts and architecture alliance, in which time I learned that if you had a private entity, even if it was a not-for-profit, that you could not override it, whether you were the city, the town, or anything else, and they could do whatever they wanted to. And they actually tore down an unbelievable building. Um, when I came here, I was really a little bit burned out, and I thought, oh my God, look at the Waldron. There's an art center here. I'm so excited. There were so many classes here. There were all kinds of uh, instructors, mega instructors, and a lot of them were seriously good. 
and I love being here, and I love doing it. I work for, as a chair of SCORE, and I work with all kinds of not-for-profits, uh, among them the Glass Center, and I can't tell you how thrilled I was the other night when Abby said, well, it wouldn't have happened without your help. Believe me, I never thought of that as happening. So when I joined the BAC, and it's been now about three and a half years, um, I thought, oh, great, we can really do something. And um, I had all these mega ideas, <laughs> which Brian can... We've had several conversations. <laughs> very attest to. And I was enormously frustrated at, at uh, the fact that everybody said, great idea, this is terrific, and then nothing happened. Some of that was due to internal changes, due to COVID, and a lot of it, I think, was due to the limitations that we as a, an arts commission have, which I honestly did not and still don't really understand, but I think that there, that we're going through a lot of those. And that's my biggest point right now, is that we do go through them. Uh, one, of the, one of the ideas was to do Paint Bloomington, and it just didn't happen. So I thought, screw it, I'll do it. And um, basically the concept, which is my whole entire concept, is to celebrate visual arts by the whole population who lives here. That includes all ages from elementary schools to, you know, the aged and infirm and everybody in between. Um, and when I did paint Bloomington, I have to tell you, it was easy. It was not hard to do. And it just required somebody who had the time and the energy and could give directions and finding people who were had the time and the energy to do it. So uh, it was done with a very small budget, and it happened. So the other things that have really frustrated me were the concept of having an art inventory. Okay. And one of the things that I think that we tend to do here is we say, fine, let's do it and let's work with a class or some group at the university. I think that's inefficient. I think it's ineffective. I don't think it works because the university, by its own structure, it's semester driven. And you have people who are defined by that semester, by the time that they're here. And no matter what the good intentions are, um, there, uh, it's a population that is not intact for a long period of time and, and doesn't have a ton of time. Uh, the same thing happened when we talked about doing a map and a map of art. So I think what's really happened is that there has been, if anything, in my eyes, that visual arts here has gone on a real slide down. And I'm talking about visual arts, period. Um, uh, when I walked in here the other day into City Hall, I was really appalled. When I looked at uh, a display case with stuff falling down in it, I thought, how can anybody, how can commissioners, how can people come in here and look at that? Aren't they mortified and embarrassed? And the fact there's no artwork hanging down there, what does that say about our town? Okay, it's the same thing as that. It says we don't care that we don't have any, any eye for it, and therefore maybe that's part of what's happening with why we no longer have uh, a, a great building classes for visual arts here. So I would like to suggest that we do a few things and we think about easy ways to accomplish it and do it. Um, one is that I think we should take over the display cabinet, period. Uh, talk to whoever it is, put one person in charge, maybe it goes under public art or not, and it's real simple. Make a schedule, and I can think of eight different groups, give them two months to do it. Uh, we've done this, the, the uh, pottery group has done the display case at the Indy Airport. So has the signature group of the Bloomington um, uh, Watercolor Society. We've got the weaving group, we have a portrait group, we have a quilter group. We've got all kinds of groups. If you add it together, it's probably a thousand people who are all part of the Bloomington visual arts community. 
And I think it would be a really easy thing to do and a no-brainer and just require making a few phone calls and a schedule. And certainly, you know, in, in maybe in the public art committee, I would be glad to take it on and have somebody else do it with me. I think you need to have two people do everything and, you know, keep as little of it because everybody's busy. I'm, I'm probably the least busy, um, you know, because I don't have a job. I don't have a family. Try to, you know, get more. And I have access to a lot of people who aren't busy right now. So, you know, let, let's try to do a subcommittee, try to say, recognize this is what should be done and then give it to a couple of people who can make it happen and make it happen within a 30-day period, not a long extended period. Because I know, I mean, I know how much, Holly, you know, I, I know how much all of you all are doing and how many different kinds of things. And I think that maybe we can better use some of our members or our extended community. So that's one thing, the display cabinet. The second thing is... Can I ask real quick? Yeah. How, how many points are there? Three more points, okay. So, the um, second, the other thing is with the art inventory. Um, I have a couple of ideas of how to simplify that. I worked on it in different ways, and it kept getting more complicated as opposed to becoming simpler. It, di it divides up into different ways. You have a physical art inventory of what's in two or three buildings. And that's something that I think that I could get uh, a couple of the art groups who are bored to tears because they can't go do plein air painting would be thrilled to come in here and to do a, take photographs, say what it is if we know, and that's it. You just have to define where it is, um, and, and then and then later on we can do some of the other the other pieces that are outside and what have you that we're trying to get to do. Um, and I think that that's something that we could really, it, it, it's been an ongoing thing that we could really make a dent in it in a short period of time. The third thing is that once we have that, that inventory, then I think we can look at what we need to do to supplement it. And then consider um, going ahead and, uh, and, and purchasing or looking at other, other art so we start building um, uh, an, uh, as, uh, an art inventory that is viable and that's representative of Bloomington. Um, the, uh, and so I think it's a multi-level, I think it's a step-by-step -step proposal, and I think that the end result of it will be that Bloomington should be known as a visual art town. There's absolutely no reason why it shouldn't be. Instead, it's Nashville, okay? And that there is an, both a need for it. I think that it is something that invigorates the community here. And I think most of all, if we start by having a great lobby out here, you know, they used to have it. Uh, they used to have openings here. Uh, all the different organizations came in here. What I was told is that part of the problem is that the walls were not good for ch uh, for changing art or not, and that it became somewhat problematic or so many people showed up. I don't know if that's true or not. But, um, but I don't think we have to do that. I think we can do something of a permanent nature that just makes it, it look, you know, it look like something we want to do. So um, they're all simple things to do, and I think they're things that we can accomplish in a short period of time and just get it done. And that's my point. Okay. Uh, would love to hear feedback and discussion on those points. No. <laughs> well, I think, a quick thing, on, on the display case, I think one thing I'd want to clarify, we're talking about like what's right outside of right. council chambers, right? So what I've seen in that space is that it's not purely an art display space. Right. It is used by other departments within the city to promote events, to promote different, different initiatives, whatever else. And so, personally, um, I think that's the best use for that space. I don't think we as the Arts Commission should try to stake a complete claim to it. If we want to insert ourselves into the rotation and say, hey, we want to program the space one month out of the year, 
around a certain event or whatever else. I think that's totally reasonable, but. There are two cases. Okay. Here. There's one case at Central, there's another one at the end. Yeah, I mean, so maybe we just need clarity on the sort of who programs us now. Yeah, and, and I think exactly. it's, it's kind of a shared space, and I do agree, like, you know, it's, it's also a way to message other things to the community, so I wouldn't want to attract, detract from, you know, other departments' ability to share that information, mm -hmm. but I do agree. It, it would be much easier for ES, like ESD and the arts to say, so ESD, Economic and Sustainable Development, my department to say, hey, could we have a stake in this once or twice a year? I think that would be easier mm -hmm. and just fairer to everybody else who needs that space to share information to our community. Um, I think I'm just a little confused as to what the, Bloomington's a town that you can't go a block without tripping over an art gallery, and, <laughs> and that's a wonderful thing. Are you talking about specifically city-supported art as opposed to, the, and, and if so, where would that be? Because in, in my um, uh, opinion, there's art all over the place, and, you know, hanging off the parking garages and all of this, I feel like it's a very visual town, but but I don't have much to compare it to except Washington Heights, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know? Um, so, so I guess I'm curious as to what falls into the city's uh, maybe jurisdiction or remit and what what is more private and um, or business oriented or nonprofit oriented. I don't expect an answer on that. I'm yeah, just I'm wondering how it... I can speak to it, but I want to give everybody else a chance to speak first. I like the idea of purchasing art from emerging artists. I think that's definitely um, an avenue that we could use to support. And we have, like, I mean, our, our grand cycles prove it. Our, the amount of just art in this town, um, like, shows there are artists here working and creating, and I would love to support them in some way, especially um, emerging artists. And to, I, I, think, I think my question comes in if, do we necessarily need to have the inventory in place to then add um, art to it, or is this just something that we decide that we um, also like? How many do we purchase? Like, what um, is this something that we have folks like enter and submission based to like be the one that is purchased? And where does it where I'm will little, it live? I'm clear what we're talking about purchasing. Are we talking about like like more permanent public art installations like outside in the more public space? Or are you talking about smaller pieces smaller in city pieces. hall? Like it's choosing a, a, a piece of art every year to start a BAC city collection. Like, because, we, you know, we used to do the postcards. We, um, the mayor used to buy some artwork. Like, that has stalled. That yeah. has so so where, does, where does this collection go? Well, the, well that, that's the question. The, I mean, I think this is a step-by-step -step process. I don't think... Yeah, you don't have all the answers at this point. But, right. right, but this is coming from a place of there's a void to fill. Where's the well, void? I see the void outside of this building, not in this building. I, I think it's I think it's both. But I think that's something that we need to look at. Um, that look at what what are what are the public buildings? I don't know what's in the courthouse or what isn't. I don't know. You know, I I don't. I really don't know. I know that I don't. I know that I visually when I go into city buildings, I don't see it. And I know when I walk in here, I was just. It just hit me. So, you know, um, um, I, I can think of a lot of other buildings like this that I walk into that, that are buildings that really tell, you know, give some, give some history or some yeah. something. I mean, um, the, um, so I don't know. And for all I know, there may be a closet full of it. What happened, you know? <laughs> well, so I mean, maybe that goes back to the... the the, the art inventory, I mean, which we've talked about in public art meetings for the better course of a couple of years. Mm -hmm. We've tried a couple times to install a process that, admittedly, myself included, no one really acted on. And then I thought that last we discussed, were, were you going to talk with... I was hoping to get a SPIA group in winter to help us bring that up to snuff. But, but, but if you feel like you have a group of folks who would have the initiative to do that. Um, I, I think that's a conversation worth 
having and an option worth exploring. You get what the parameters are. Yeah. I don't even, you know, what are the public buildings and where in these, what, what is it that we know? Right. You I know. Yeah, I think we would just want to embed that in a bigger strategy of like, okay, step one, inventory. Step two, you know, exactly. how is that, like, how can we map that in a way so we know what is where? Step three, yeah. assess where there is paucity. Step four, think about how we can supplement it. And then step five, maintenance. Because my fear is, okay, we rebuild the collection and five years from now, a completely new commission is like, oh my gosh, nobody has updated this database in like three years. We don't know where anything is, you know. So we would just need to make sure we have a really strong plan and develop partnerships potentially if we chose to go this route with other, you know, city facilities and the folks that run those facilities to make sure those rotations and upkeep is happening. So it would include some buy-in from the facilities managers of these other city buildings as well. Well, I would propose a step that we that we just go ahead and and, and sit down the people who are interested, set a time that we sit down and we talk about what step one is, how to divide it up so that we make it happen. And step one is figuring out what we've got, you know, and where it is and what building, you know, what, are, what buildings w would be involved or not. And, you know, we're a starting point. We have a template for that. We just need the people yeah. to do it. Right. Yeah. We just need to. And, and it's, we've had that template for over a year. I mean, so it, we just need the people to do it. That's always been our problem is, is the labor, like the time. And so, but the thing I will say is that what is really, really important to me is that it's a comprehensive art inventory, mm -hmm. that it is not just framed pictures that may be right. inside buildings, that it includes the full public space. Mm -hmm. We're getting things that are outside. We're getting things that are publicly controlled, things that are privately controlled. Yeah, but maybe you have to tackle it by those categories. Exactly. What is inside a city building? What is city art outside? What is public partnership? Right. What, you know, you go in the, in those buckets, which we already defined yeah, I, pretty I, much. Exactly, I agree. But what I'm saying is that I think that maybe it needs, doesn't need to be complete, but I think we need to have a decent idea of all of those spheres before we make any decisions about how to spend money. Because my, I, I'm saying this without seeing the inventory, right? Like, but yeah, my, my gut instinct is that a much, I would much rather see like BAC or City Dollars spent on putting art in a place where people are, but there is not already art. Mm -hmm. You know, say like east side of town, where there's very little public art. Mm -hmm. That to me reaches people, and there's, there's much more value in that than uh, purchasing art to put on the wall in City Hall, where there are not as many people. And it's a different type of person. I'm not, I'm, I, I, had a, I had a thought to I'm, start. Um, I'm gonna let Nina have, I, or, yeah. would, you need to give her a thought, and then we need to move on in our agenda. We have some critical things that we need to get to. The, the resource list, I'm like, uh, finding people to do the commissions and stuff isn't a problem because we have tons of, you know, past grant recipients who still live in town that we can follow up with and, you know, commission to do more stuff and, like, you know, and we could do that, like, every year, like, you know what I mean? Like, have people, like, I don't know, we have, like, an inventory list already, basically. It's just we need to like backtrack and like already, you know, the people we've given money to in the past, like follow up with them. And then like people who've applied, you know what I mean? That like we gave them feedback and whatever, like also those people, like, you know, the, the resources are there and we all kind of like have put work into putting that together, especially with like the grants committee and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but they just needs to be more formalized. Yeah. And like the template, uh, I, I, would, I would like to see that. Uh, is it like a document? Nick? Yeah, the it's, template for the yeah, there's there's an old like Google sheet that um, there's an inventory from like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, something like that, maybe longer, cool. that, yeah, that, yeah, well, that has some items. And, and like we in the public art committee, like I think Babette found like a, something from Limestone Post and mm -hmm. like a couple other articles okay. that, that had some like highlights of murals. And so we kind of had that as a starting point. We just kind of needed to send people out to then go either get photos or confirm something's still there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is is this something that belongs like to have a deeper discussion at, at a public arts meet or um, a public yeah. arts? Yeah. Community? Let me just say we've okay. done this. Okay. And, and and this is my frustration. We've done this, and I would suggest that, and we can discuss it to the cows come home. 
But I think the best way to handle this, if we all agree this is something that should be done, and we need to start not at the end deciding whether we're going to buy something or not, but start at the beginning, which is putting together putting together an inventory and seeing what what we're talking about, what buildings we're talking about, and dividing it up the same way uh, that Nick is suggesting, which is, you know, but this murals, you know, there are different categories that we did. And that there's, I, I can't move on it without some additional information mm -hmm. that Holly probably knows or knows where to get. Yeah. And I would say that we should just get people who are interested in really getting this to happen. Let's set up a time when we sit down, we have an outline of what we need to do, and we put it down firmly on paper. This is what we're, this is what we need to do. This is the process. This is step one and get people assigned to do it and then just get it to happen. I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it, it's a process. It's not, you know, and, and yeah. otherwise we're going to be talking about this next year. Sure. Okay. I hear you. Mm -hmm. and my suggestion would be at this point to mm -hmm. say, figure those steps out at the first public art meeting um, in January, just because mm -hmm. of the timing. Holly's yeah. taking time That's off. Everybody's taking time off right now. So mm -hmm. trying to get people to commit to things over the next three weeks is yeah. a big ask mm -hmm. that I think is not quite fair. So bored people. <laughs> <laughs> so in January, you know, you all have this in your heads. You bring it to that first public art meeting, and the with a full commission, I think it's about a, a week later or so. Mm -hmm. Then. Everybody has had a time to kind of digest the information, bring some new thoughts, and then kick it off then yeah. as to what those steps are. Okay, and can be. I just suggest that everybody, if you have thoughts about it, all the different things that should be put into this, if you just email it to me, I'll try to put it together in some kind of uh, a document that makes some sense. You know, what, what buildings should be involved, what kind of things should be involved, in getting this, in, getting the inventory together, and any other ideas that you have or pieces you want to volunteer to, to do, so that at least we have a, a place that's a working place to make it happen. My whole point is how to make stuff happen, not just to talk about it. Yeah, I imagine there's a list somewhere of city buildings and city. Spaces or yeah, and, and even that, <laughs> that spreadsheet has a lot of locations. So, yeah, yeah. 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 all right, well, yeah. we need to move Great. on. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so let's, yeah, thank, thanks for bringing those up, Babette. Yeah. Um, uh, and I I will be at that next uh, public arts meeting, and I look forward to hearing more about that. Um, so, okay, uh, speaking of public art, we're going to get an update on the public art subcommittee from Natalie. I will give a very brief update for this month. Um, we, at our last subcommittee meeting, met to discuss the public art master plan um, and kind of talked about the edits that have been made to it recently. And I think as a subcommittee, we generally think that it is um, good to go. Um, we have a few more days left for subcommittee members to provide extra edits. I will resend that um, over to folks after this meeting just so everyone can look it over again. But after that, um, I think it is ready to be um, submitted and sent over to legal also for review, I think is what we talked about, um, just to get some input on that. But that's, I think, our biggest undertaking currently in the Public Arts Subcommittee right. is talking through that uh, master plan and then uh, no new um, project updates currently beyond what I shared last meeting. I think we'll um, we'll have a lot more to share in January. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if you have yet. If you can mm -hmm. add me to the yeah. public art meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, invite. actually, I think Great. Holly might mm -hmm. own that invite. Okay. I'll do that right now. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Excellent. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, Holly, are you by chance giving the... Yes, I am. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> uh, so Holly will now give the update for the grant subcommittee. Um, hi, everyone. I'm sorry I'm not as charming as Elliot, but <laughs> here we go. Um, so, um, so basically, we're also kind of in a holding pattern, nothing new to share. We had a great last grant subcommittee meeting, um, I think that was in November, just talking about lessons learned from this year's grant cycles, and we're gonna be doing some work between now and the end of January just to get 
applications up to snuff and launch the 23 cycles, but we'll be talking more about that in the January grant subcommittee meeting. So nothing really new to report except for woohoo, great year, 84 grantees, $133,000 spent. Just can not all out those, the can, door yet. Can you repeat those numbers? 84, 84 <laughs> grantees. Um, so we gave grants to 84 artists, be they emerging organizations, artist groups, doing arts projects, and the total amount of money that we gave out was $133,000-ish. So we hit our goal. We knew we had a huge undertaking when we started the year, and I, I think we did an excellent job. So congratulations to Elliot and the grant subcommittee. It's been awesome working with y'all. Um, and also, Elliot says she loves you all very much. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, thank you, Holly. Um, okay, I have two quick things moving on to agenda item number eight. Um, so the first is the secretary position. So at the last meeting, um, Bryony asked for um, for commissioners who were interested in the position to um, reach out to her um, by the time of the midpoint email. Um, we, we did receive one person who reached out um, to volunteer for that position. That person is Nick Blanford. Um, and so I would like to um, <laughs> offer, if you, if you would like it, a chance to say a little bit, and then we were, and then people can ask or commissioners can ask questions, uh, and then we will throw that to a vote today. Uh, sure, I'll keep it short. Um, <laughs> full, full, full disclosure, I, I, I put my name forward, but uh, told Gerard I would yield if anyone else did. Um, so uh, I guess my, my thought was, now that we've sort of more clearly defined the secretary role um, through the, the, um, the task force, um, I feel like as we're about to wrap that task force up, um, there's sort of like a natural bridge um, to the work there um, where, where I can uh, contribute in the secretary role. You know, I think beyond taking notes, you know, we talked about, um, you know, just just helping to keep um, everything a little bit more organized, tracking commissioner and leadership terms, um, you know, helping staff monitor monthly attendance, things like that. Um, and so I'm happy to do that. And as a bonus, if I'm taking notes, I'll talk less in these meetings. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone will, will give a yay for that. So um, that, that's my piece. I'm, hap I'm happy to do that for the, How do you think you make the last point? year. <laughs> I could just make them a little bit shorter. <laughs> or just write them into the, the, right. yeah. into yeah. the public yeah. record. Yeah. 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 Let it be known. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Um, okay. Fantastic. Does anyone have any uh, questions or comments? I personally am thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> and happily will nominate you. <laughs> uh, what's the term? The. Good, I believe it's a. Oh man. All right. Go go I gotta, go. Check go, your go, document. I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna say it's one year. So yes, yeah, so we discussed. Um, with a, a lot of positions, it's a minimum of one year mm -hmm. and a suggested two years. Mm -hmm. In this case, um, I only have a year left uh, on my overall BAC term. Mm -hmm. and it's my second term, so I will have to cycle out after a year. Mm -hmm. So, full disclosure, yeah. it'll be just for a year. Um, yeah. 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 So, if anybody wants to pay attention, mm -hmm. anyone wants a <laughs> yeah. sweet roll. Okay, excellent. Then um, we will go ahead and put this to a vote. Um, you have to state what the oh, okay. vote is, okay. what you're voting on. We are going to be voting on approving Nick Blanford for Secretary of the Bloomington Arts Commission um, for this next year. Um, all in favor of that, say aye. 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 That includes those on. Aye. Oh, okay. in the chat. Yeah, yeah, right now just oh, I think just Nia. Yeah, 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 yeah. We lost we lost Rachel. Okay. Uh, well fantastic. I think I think I'm the, the motion passes. Um, thank you, Nick. Sure. Um, 
All right, and then the second thing uh, from your chair is I, I, I wanted to get a little bit of, um, I think, feedback on the party that we had. Um, I had a lot of fun and enjoyed it. Um, I also helped to plan it. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I guess I just wanted to, to check in and see. I mean, both just, I don't, like, um, this is both sort of an informal, like, you know, how, like, how did you enjoy it? And, like, I don't know, was, was um, but also looking for any sort of, like, constructive feedback on, oh, if, we're, cause if we are going to do things like this um, going forward, like, what are some maybe things we should incorporate or think about as, as we are having these sorts of commission, grantee, um, broader, like, kind of, it wasn't an open party, but it was a somewhat open public party. So opening the floor up for feedback. I missed a little bit the connection to the grantees. Like, mm -hmm. we all came in and everybody was kind of in their corner, then we did speeches and then karaoke, and mm -hmm. there was no real intention in connecting with the grantees or a good opportunity other than, you know, kind of have a napkin sure. kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so creating or enabling that connection a little bit more, I think. Sure. And is, is that something through the through the comments, like, like through the, the the comments that would be made, or um, I don't know, like, like no, I think this maybe... be, you know, we were in two spaces, well, three spaces really, like the entrance sure. where the food was, and then the back mm -hmm. room, and so everybody was kind of like. In high school, a little oh, bit. so like, making sure that just you know, like, socially are integrating I'm, more I'm with. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Sure. Right I okay. That's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, I think it needs to be. I think you use the word intentional. Like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe having some of the grantees show their work mm -hmm. or um, or, or share some place, words. Or right. Or one of music. one of the uh, one of the jazz artists was handing out CDs. Maybe we could play some of their music or something. Um, I, I think that karaoke was fun, but it meant that you couldn't have a conversation once yeah. it started, and that oh, okay. that really puts a limit on people interacting and meeting each other. So um, that's a matter of the space, though. I think if it's a space where it's, but then you're separating people. So yeah, but, but I mean, yes, we were in three spaces, but there was also nothing to bring us together mm -hmm. um, to have those conversations. Mm -hmm. And I agree that once we were in karaoke, you know those who wanted to talk eventually left and sure. yeah. it, it became something else. I think, I think two specific suggestions to, to those points. It, it, maybe I missed it because I, I brought my BA, BAC name tag. But <laughs> if there weren't name tags like for, for other guests, I think yeah. that, that could help to that end. The other thing is that um, uh, in the past, pre-pandemic, um, when we had like the June Arts Night at the city, mm -hmm. we would, before a council meeting, um, have like a granting award ceremony here at City Hall. And so this was simpler because we had one grant cycle, yeah. right? <laughs> and so everyone could come, mm -hmm. you know, we, it was sort of like graduation. You'd kind of like call them one by one, they come up, shake some hands, mm -hmm. you know, the get mayor, an envelope. Get an envelope, the mayor would be there, whatever. So that maybe doesn't work as, as neatly with a multi cycle grant structure, mm -hmm. but what we could do is if we had RSVPs, um, could ask people, are you a grant recipient when they RSVP? Mm -hmm. And then you have a list, and maybe it's, we could do something similar where you like acknowledge the grant recipients who are there, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a similar sort of way. Mm -hmm. So maybe you know, and if and maybe there's an opportunity for them to present or whatever else, but that way, like the burden that's not necessarily on them to provide something, mm -hmm. but you're still acknowledging them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, or even like have, you know, hello stickers. And red ones are for grantees, and blue ones are for attendees, and you can start to have a conversation about that kind of thing. Okay. Um, yeah, good point about the name tags. That was brought up to me, actually, a couple grant recipients. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of positive feedback, I thought, about being in that space. I thought it was cool to be outside the city hall. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and yeah. people bought stuff. So I yeah. feel like yeah. that made us, like, good you know, partners yeah. of the Creative Glass Center. Right. People were excited to be in that space, even though we had to like sweep it yeah. and move stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I do want to give a shout out to Polly's uh, yeah. slideshow. Yeah, the slideshow was beautiful. There, there, there yeah. was the slideshow, 
which mm -hmm. I like uh, gave um, uh, showcased some of the recipients and the grants that we had given out this year, in addition to the commissioners on there. Yeah. So. But uh, I also, if we, if we could have had maybe a table that people could have examples of what they did or something, um, and, and there could be a little bit of networking that they could do. Um, I just happened to recognize one or two people that, you know, I went over it, but I didn't have a clue who I would have been surprised if I'd known who they were. And I also think it's interesting that what you were saying about doing some kind of, even if it's a small event or something here where you're giving out the grants, that's what, we always do that. And it was, the, the, the net, especially when the emerging artists and, you know, or, or those kinds of grant cycles, they network with each other not, and with yeah. us. And I think it's, that that's something maybe we want to consider yeah, you can going back to. Yeah, probably restart it now, post-pandemic. Yeah. I mean, for a while there, it yeah. really wasn't even an option. And it was at City Hall? Yeah. It was at City was, Hall at okay. the June meeting. Okay. So every June, we would present to City Hall, okay. like, our annual review so summary. Okay. There's okay. a whole bunch of PowerPoints yeah. on the, okay. on the drive. So, you, so, you have so before, yeah. like, the hour before, we would be out there in the lobby. Sure. And doing all of this council presentation. Right. Yeah, <laughs> but, but, but it, was, it was it was brief. Okay. It it helped assure that the mayor was there or a council mm -hmm. person was there. Mm -hmm. um, okay. You know, and then it encouraged grantees to go into city to go in, to go into the council meeting mm -hmm. when we present mm -hmm. and puts a few extra friendly faces and public comments in the gallery. Okay. So that was that was the other angle for it. And people can watch it on TV. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is all awesome because I do want to do. It's a great presentation idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. In 2023. That will follow you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we want to do it in June, we'll. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe not June. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I know it's a lot to add to. Oh, what are you going to say? Name tags. The name tags are great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New name tags. Because when I say that, I'm sorry. But I would just be yeah. a minority. <laughs> on the record. But you know, you don't have to do basic name tags. There's a lot of creative ways to approach name tags. Um, if you Google like creative mornings, they do all kinds of stuff with name tags that are a little bit more interesting, that are also icebreakers, that start conversations that. Um, yeah. You just haven't had the right name tag. You're probably yeah. right. I think my first experience working with name tags was not the best, and so ever since I've been like, they're not, yeah. but that's fine. Good name tags could be their little like souvenir. They make them yeah. Mm -hmm. That could be the award we could hand up. Yeah. That could be the award. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think it was such a, it was such a massive grant cycle that it was, you know, hard to find a way to like make it special for all the folks and like uh, honor them. I agree. I think that feedback is really yeah. um, necessary for the, for this like party specifically, but I also think there's probably ways that we could maybe do that throughout the year and throughout the cycles. Now that we're starting sure. to figure that out too, right. not to add to Elliot's um, right. grant stuff. Like I'm happy. I'm sure there's some point of collaboration there with like public art or something, or we start a party task force. Yeah, which well, I, I mean, mean, like, I, mean mm -hmm. I was gonna add, like, yeah. you know, would, would mm -hmm. that be an appropriate? to do something like that at your at those party? yeah <clears throat> um, you don't you can think okay. about it yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just well, want to say this for the artist party is I'm kind of open to anything um, because I like to have some sort of event going on that could be an exhibit that can be the BAC doing something like we're partnering with you guys at Grand Balloon mm -hmm. So I do want some sort of activity at the artist party. So if you wanted to ever combine forces of the BAC with an artist party, okay. that's fine. Okay. I also I think that a lot of things about it were really terrific, and I think it was a great place to do it. You know, as a recipient, and yeah. So I mean, I thought it, you know, for the first time, it was really. It was a happy event. Yeah. Great job, Holly. Yeah. <laughs> Um, before we move on to commissioner announcements, any any other comments from folks online? 
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Holly, for getting the Cardinal yeah. Spirit donation. That yeah. was awesome. Right. Woo -hoo. Pleasant surprise. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Wonderful. Um, Let's move on to commissioner commissioner announcements. I'll go ahead and kick things off because I got some good news for all of y'all. Um, so my commissioner announcement is actually uh, connected to um, the, my my spouse's job. She she works at the Buzzkirk Chumley Theater, and um, this past Sunday was the centennial of the um, of the Indiana Theater, the Buzzkirk Chumley Theater as we know it. And they are throwing a um, a neon jubilee in uh, on January twenty eighth. So like a big sort of like nineteen twenties themed um, party or uh, gala um, at the BCT. There's going to be like a uh, lots of announcements and activities and like a nineteen twenties band and um, uh, it, it, this is going to be a whole big fun affair. Um, tickets are on sale for it right now, and I have invites for you all. And good news that um, Blooming, uh, Bloomington commissioners on the Bloomington Arts Commission, um, as well as Holly and Chaz, um, get two complimentary tickets to go to the gala. Um, so if you would like to go by January 6th, uh, email me, let me know um, how many, uh, you know, like um, if you want like, your one or two tickets. Um, you can, of course, order more on top of that if you want to bring more people to it. Um, but I'll get two complimentary tickets. And, um, yeah, let me know if you wouldn't mind passing those All around. Right. And that, Thank yeah. you. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, 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 and you too, Polly. I should, I should mm -hmm. include you there. <laughs> Do you want to leave one for Polly with Holly? Yeah, I'll keep one for Polly. And I'll give Elliot one as well. Yeah, and I've, I've RSVP'd with Lily, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But thank you. She, she, she mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. Do we get to wear 20s outfits too? Yeah. 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 What should I say? Yeah. Do we need to wear 20s outfits? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. Um, You're getting those back. Okay. Um, I, I'm going to make a staff announcement before we go to commissioner's announcements. So um, in the spirit of all of our amazing grantees now putting their work out into the world, there is also an open invite to us by Charlie Jessup, who is one of our emerging artists. He is having a performance at IU Auditorium this Sunday, the 18th. Um, if you are interested in tickets, please shoot me an email or let me know when we finish up tonight, and I'll make sure that you get one. should be cool. I'll be up to but I also know it's a very busy time. So thanks. <laughs> Any other commissioner announcements? Um, our friend Sergio is, uh, you know, is playing tonight at the, what's the place underneath the, the back door? House. The Block yeah. House, 7.30 and 9 o'clock set. <laughs> Unfortunately, I cannot attend, but maybe that's better. <laughs> 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 Um, Latin jazz. <laughs> so they played at the Fourth Street Garage opening. So those are yeah, great. yeah. So they, they were, really yeah, that was yeah. awesome. All right, well, I will say this is it for me. I have some um, thank you cards for all of you if oh. you pass those around. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess my commissioner announcement is I'll see you all around. I won't miss this hallway out there. Well, <laughs> yeah, I know, it is. Yeah. Yeah. When everybody's gone. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Brian, you just thank yeah. you so much again for all your leadership for the past four years and for guiding me into this position and just setting Gerard and me and us all up for success. Yeah. Going forward, we will still call on you. <laughs> We're lucky to still have you as a member of our community and our design community. So yeah, yeah. I, thank you for everything. I don't want to disappear. I want yeah. to be there to support you moving forward. Um, and I hope, I hope I did what I was asked to do for all of you and uh, leave you with wonderful leadership. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bryony. Thanks, Bryony. All right. All right, uh, we will, if, if there are no more commissioner announcements. You have public comment? Yeah, we will turn it over to public comment. Is 
Is it, hello, Susan. Susan? Yeah. Susan, do you have any? Hi, uh, I'm just asking if you have any um, any comments for the for the commission. Not right now. I was just I was just here to eavesdrop. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> to learn, I'm here to learn. Okay. Well, yeah. I hope I hope you found it informative. <laughs> I have a question. Do we have a logo that is specific for the Bloomington Arts Commission? And what does it look like? It's very similar to the city logo. It's the city logo with a different one. Yeah. Okay. And if any of our recipients are doing a program? The expectation is that they include the logo. So that's one piece of information that goes to them with their notification is a, just a PDF or a JPEG of that logo. And they ask that they put it on their materials. Okay. Because I, I had looked I, at it for it a couple of times. And... Can I, I actually, now that I think about it, I should just introduce myself real quick. I know you know who I am. Because <laughs> Laura and I work together with uh, First Thursdays. I work at ICU. But I am the new president of the Four Street Arts Commission. So um, we should be, I mean, we'll be keeping in touch and just hopefully building a monster relationship in the future. Thanks That's great. Thanks yeah, thanks, Susan. Yeah, I'm looking forward to meeting with you in a couple weeks. We're having coffee. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. All right, wonderful. Yeah. If that is um, everything from the public, then I'm happy to call this meeting to adjourn. All right. Thanks, all. Call it. Okay.